All right, what is up, everybody? This is Big T here from Young America. Um, we got a great show for you today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the worst kinds of progressives. And I don't know if you really want to call these people progressive necessarily, maybe leftist. I don't entirely know what the right word is here. Now, uh, there's been some debate on, you know, some certain uh, in Reddit and YouTube, etc. When people are discussing Andrew Yang, there's been some question about whether he is sufficiently progressive. And my answer to that would be yes. Uh, his big policies are UBI, $1,000 a month for every American. I believe that's a very progressive policy. And uh, he also believes in Medicare for all. Now, unlike Bernie Sanders, he does uh, have an opt-out opt out clause for that. He does believe that if you for whatever reason, you just don't want public health insurance, you want to have private health insurance, or if you don't want health insurance at all, I don't know why you wouldn't want it, but if you don't want it, then you have a right to opt out. And I think that that's a reasonable idea. I think that's a good idea. As an American, you should have freedom of choice. And I understand the argument from the other side that, you know, the private health insurance would lobby people and it would, you know, corrupt the industry. And, oh, oh you know, eventually over time, you know, as it's kind of done today, like, overrule the public health industry in many ways. I understand that, but I don't want to get into too much of the healthcare debate. That can be a video for another time. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about the people um, who oppose Andrew Yang, not because of reasonable objections to his policies, um, but the people who oppose Andrew Yang, be, who, who people who oppose UBI, the Freedom Dividend, and uh, Medicare for All, and his, his form Medicare for All, because they essentially want to burn it all down. And they believe that if because that his policies don't go far enough for their specific ideological worldview, they don't want anybody to be helped at all. And now on the reason the main influence for this video is this article uh, I read in the uh, it's called the Jacobin, I believe it's this, you know, very left wing socialist publication. And it's called let me pull it up here. It's in my phone. It's called um, pay Andrew Yang a thousand dollars a month to get out of the presidential race. Um, uh, now, this article is pretty disgusting. Um, it basically says that he is right about a lot of the things, but it calls him elitist for trying to help poor people. Yes, believe it or not, it calls him elitist for having you know the audacity to say, oh, here's what I want to try to do to help poor people because, you know, we need to have a violent revolution to overthrow the bourgeoisie or otherwise everything should burn down and, you know, people shouldn't get money. So I'm going to go a little more in depth about that into this article and into, you know, the worst kinds of progressives in a second. Without further ado, let's get this shit going. They took permanent vacation in hell, if you know what I mean. Wow, I must have been away too long because yeah, my feelings are dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, where well, they put their head out on me? Give them hell. They want to threaten my well-being? Give them hell. You tell Satan, throw some heat rocks up for the world's most hottest rapper spitting flames like a volcano, yeah. All right, so. Um, I just want to clarify again that when I'm talking about the worst kinds of progressives here, I'm not talking about anyone who, you know, prefers another kind of Yang or has reasonable objections to Andrew Yang's policies. You know, I'm not saying that, oh, if you don't love Andrew Yang, you're a bad person. You're, a, you're the worst kind of progressive. That's not what I'm talking about. Again, I'm specifically talking about the people uh, like this author in Jacobin magazine who believes that, you know, because who acknowledges that Andrew Yang will do some help to people and uh, identifies a lot of the right problems, but because he is not going to, you know, work to implement their ideological worldview completely, um, that he is a bad person because of that, and that they shouldn't even, you shouldn't help people because it's not going to, you know, go all the way for what they specifically want. Um, now, uh, this her this author, her name is Honda Wang. Apparently, that's a real name. Um, you know, not going to, not going to, you know, say that's not a real name, but okay, Honda Wang. Um, so she says that Yang's plan is to ameliorate uh, social conditions for the 70 million uh, normal people that will be displaced uh, because of automation in the next uh, 10 to 15 years. She does a lot of seemingly does a lot of complimenting of Andrew Yang, saying he recognizes the problem that uh, capitalism and automation uh, will has had in normal people and will continue to have in the near future, and all the uh, both the economic and social problems that will come from that. Um, however, she opposes uh, UBI, saying that this is an elitist plan which will, you know, dismantle the welfare state, uh, the rest of the welfare state. Which, just first of all, this is not true. Uh, she says that it's uh, that he's basically the same policy as Milton Friedman, which is also not true. And actually, Yang has admittedly this is partially Yang's fault because he said that Milton Friedman has endorsed this idea. He hasn't really. Milton Friedman endorsed an idea that actually would demolish the welfare state. It would be a, basically a negative income tax where the poorest people, um, instead of getting food stamps or Medicaid or whatever, or unemployment benefits, the p poorest people would get like a small amount of money 
and that would be it. They wouldn't get any other small amount of money for everything else. Uh, Yang's plan would not do that. It would plan to decrease the enrollment in other welfare programs because he wants he wants the freedom dividend to be essentially the thing that people can just rely on. But he doesn't plan, and in addition to Medicare for all, uh, which Milton Friedman did not offer, but he does not uh, want to. You know, he's not going to immediately get rid of all the welfare programs. He wants people to. You know, he wants the enrollment to gradually decrease in these programs. Anyway. So she says first says that lie, and then she goes on to talk uh, to kind of give a weird personal attack in Andrew Yang, where she says, oh, well, Yang clearly likes capitalism somewhat because his parents, for his parents, capitalism worked out really well for them. And that's true. His parents, as she says, his parents were, en were immigrant engineers from, uh, not China, from Taiwan. And they came to the U.S. and they did very well for themselves. And they did very, very, and for their kids, for Andrew Yang, uh, they did very well for themselves. And that's true. That's a good thing. This capitalism still that can still happen for people you know there's reason that even today people still want to come to this country even with all the you know all the bullshit that's all the problems with our country people still want to come to the country and get a job and you know and have kids and live the you know quote unquote american dream and that's a good thing and we shouldn't say that oh you know whoa, it, was, it worked out for his parents so just because it worked out for his parents that he has a twisted view of things no i think andrew yang understands that it's not working out for a lot of people but it still is working out for some people and we shouldn't try to get rid of that just because it's not working out for everyone else. We should try to instead make things better so that people can achieve the American dream. We shouldn't just say, oh, fuck it, you know, everything's got to go. Um, anyway, so then she also says she makes this weird claim about how he's an elitist because uh, his the thing uh, Venture for America, which he started uh, back in 2011. Venture for America was not about, you know, mobilizing working people, but instead about taking, you know, smart people, Ivy League graduates, et cetera, qualified people and having them try to start, you know, ventures in cities that do not do not have the most startups, do not have the most entrepreneurs and do not have the most thriving businesses. So apparently it's elitist to try to go into a city like uh, Cleveland or New Orleans or Detroit, uh, St. Louis to go into these cities and say, I'm going to try to start businesses that are going to help normal people. I don't know why that's elitist, and I think I would make a good claim that she's actually the elitist, that Honda Wang is actually the elitist in this case. Because what Honda Wang is saying is that we need to, you know, mobilize a revolution of, you know, working people, a political revolution, making sure that the institutions reflect their needs and represent them. I agree that the institutions need to represent, you know, normal people, middle class people, working people. I agree with that. And I think Andrew Yang agrees with that, too. He has constantly said that, you know, our government, people have lost faith in our government. Our government does not represent us. But what Honda Wang fails to see, the author of the Jackman article fails to understand, is that what the working people want, for the most part, is not a communist revolution. They do not want, you know, some sort of violent revolution that's going to overthrow the bourgeoisie. And you might say, oh, well, they don't want what a violent, but it, would, it only is going to happen with violence. That's just the case, you know. Um, if you think that, you know, the, the people in power, the people with billions of dollars are just going to give up all their money peacefully, that's just not going to happen. Anyway, um, so what she is saying is that, oh, well, that's what these people want. They don't want just, you know, some, someone, someone to give them some stuff and then say, oh, take it from here. I don't know about that. I don't have any stats right here to back up in front of me. But I'm pretty sure that the average working person is not a communist. The average working person wants to have a safety net. They want to have Medicare. They want to have, uh, they want to have money. They they want to have food on the table. They want to have uh, the ability to afford their homes. They want to have the ability to you know put their kids get their kids a good education. They want the ability to do what they want. But the average working person is not someone that wants to overthrow the system. The average working person is someone that wants to have the basics so that they can live their lives and do what they want with it and do what they want with their money. And what Andrew Yang is going to do with the with the freedom dividend is he's going to give people money, not just in to say, oh, here's what the money is for, not even the elitist way of saying, oh, here's what you use to use this money for. He's going to do it in the least elitist way possible. Andrew Yang is going to give people straight cash and he's going to say, here you go. Here's your money. You do what you want with it. And the idea that we should just forgo this because, oh, because of we need to do the revolution that, oh, you shouldn't get your thousand dollars. I'm sorry, but that is elitist and ridiculous. I mean, there are 500,000 homeless people in this country as of 2017. I think all of them would benefit a whole lot from a thousand dollars a month. I mean, so I would suggest anyone, any of these progressives, whether it's not just, you know, this, this one from Jacobin, but, you know, the Sam Cedars and the Michael Brooks who have been making this argument, you know, these types of people that are saying, oh, Andrew Yang is, is an elitist and, and oh, Ooh, well, uh, this is actually, it's go, it's going to demolish the welfare state, uh, which is totally, you know, most people aren't even getting $1,000 a month in welfare. That's just not even true. 
Um, so it's not going to demolish what I say. But any of these people are like, oh, you know, we need a grassroots mobilization. And uh, uh, Andrew Yang is not the cabinet that's going to do that. I hope I sound a little bit like Michael Brooks there. But if I don't, I don't care. I um, haven't watched too many of his videos. Anyway, the point is that, um, sorry, I ramble a little point is that I would I would suggest for any of these people saying oh well you know this thousand dollars a month that's not good enough so we just shouldn't do it at all go to one of these homeless people okay there's plenty of them in New York City go to one of these homeless people uh, go up in the subway see someone that's homeless and sleeping in a bag and say oh you shouldn't get a thousand dollars a month tell them not to their face you shouldn't get a thousand dollars a month because that's not good enough that's not good enough for my ideological worldview and hear what they have to say okay if, if you're not comfortable with doing that, then you should stop arguing that uh, that this is a bad... If, again, if you want to argue your own idea, fine, but don't... But all this attacks in Andrew Yang, whether it's because, oh, he polls ex-conservatives, he polls ex-Trump supporters, and so he's clearly alt-right. There's an article in the outline, which is, I think, I don't even know entirely what the outline is. I think it's like Vox Light, you know, it's another one of these, these you know, New York publications that tells you, you know, uh, we know, you know, what's good and, you know, here's why, you know, we're better than you. And it's, it's another one of those publications that does that. And so if you're one of those people that it's like, oh, well, we don't like Andrew Yang because, you know, he's not, you know, he doesn't do everything that we'd want him to do. So, you know, therefore you shouldn't get the bag. You know, you shouldn't get your money. You shouldn't get your Medicare uh, for all because it's not the proper version of Medicare for all. Again, go to go to a poor person. It doesn't have to be a homeless person. Go to a poor person, someone living paycheck to paycheck, which is a lot of the country and tell them, tell them that, tell them to their face that, you know, we don't want you to get a thousand dollars a month because of that. I don't think this is going to go over too well. And if you still think that if you if you still think that, uh, you know, oh, well, I'm still right. So too bad for all these people. I don't care what these people do because I need to be right. Um, well, then you just you're just not a good person. I'm sorry. You're just you're just not a very good person. Uh, you're selfish and you're full, probably full of shit. Uh, so that's my spiel. Um, if, if, if you're that one of those people, you're one of the worst kinds of progressives. Um, I'm sorry, but that's just the case. And uh, I hope that you do not win uh, politically. I hope that uh, reasonable progressives who want, who are focused on results, will beat you uh, politically. And yep, that's uh, that's all I gotta say. Have a great day, motherfuckers. This is Young America signing out.